Hey, what's going on, Archons? It's time to do another Would You Rather with my Friday Night Forging decks. My uh, friend and I, we play IRL Key Forge every Friday, and uh, we're doing some mass mutation because he hasn't had a ton of experience getting to play it that much. And uh, yeah, I want him to enjoy it a little bit more and get a feel for it. So we're going to be showing this from my Friday Night Forge decks. So here's the two we have, and you got to guess. Or you don't got to guess. You got to decide which one of these two you would have rather had. So we got the Logos, Saurian, and Untamed deck, Desperately Active, Ayapo. We got a Bok Book Din, Daughter, Effervescent Principal, Two Even Ivans, Lethologica, Cumex, Titan Engineer, Dimension Door, Krizap. Zenzi, Sacrobot, and then we got Beware the Ides, Citizen Strix, Citizen Strix with a pip, a draw pip, Council Primus, Two Curse of Vanities, Galia Tops, Theros and Churian Stomp, Saurus Rex, yeah, two leaders in one deck, Tertiate, Monument to Primus, and we got Dark Fairy, Flump, Key Frog, Lost in the Woods with a Capture, another Lost in the Woods, Reclaimed by Nature, Resurgence, Savage Class, Song of the Wild, Dark Harbinger. Mutation of Cunning and Mutation of Fury. Um, so there are the stats for this deck, including the pips and creature count. Um, first things first is like, check this out. So, so there's the um, Dark Harbinger with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 actions, which is pretty wild, especially if you can get the uh, Song of the Wild beforehand, you are literally laughing your way to the bank with that. And then a Key Frog potential. Um, unfortunately, the only problem with Key Frog is it's the only two power unless you get Dark Fairy out as well. So there's some cool things with that. Uh, aside from that, I mean, the Logos is everything you want. Cumex Titan, Dimension Krizap, Zenzi, Sacrobot. Like, the cycle is really nice. You got some good stuff there. You got, I mean... Potentially with Zenzi and Daughter, you have a plus three hand, which is ridiculous. Um, and then going on to Dinos, like it's it's a very good Dino house. I think you got some removal. Double Shrix is nice, especially with a Primus, two Curse of Vanity, Galia Top Centurion Stomp, Cyrus Rex Tertiate Monuments to Primus. Um, yeah, just just good stuff. It's it's very solid all around for all the stuff. This is a good deck, and I say this. So, forcibly, because this deck is also pretty good. Um, this is actually a tough one, I think. So next up, the thing that strays from the elements with an untamed Shadow Sora, and we got a Citizen Tricks, Primus, Curse of Vanity, Faust, Galia Tops, Ancient Power, Double Siren Horn, one with a damage pip. Check this out. Technosaurus, Technosaurus, Umbrosaurus, Xenosaurus. Bone Nithing with a Damage, Dark Wave, Double Francis, Look Over There, Mutant Cut Purse, Double Opportunist, Subtle Auto, Tempting Offer, Old Bruno, Shadow Source with a Capture, Flump, Double Ghost Hawk, Key Frog with a Damage Pip, Three Niffle Apes, then we got the Rapid Evolution, Niffle Queen, Troop Call, It's a Niffle Party, as my man JD would say, and we got Post Pixies and a Xeno Beast, okay? So why is this deck so wild because check this out you have cursive so faust if you can keep faust alive it is ridiculously powerful because you've got ancient power which is going to ward everything you put ember on you got so many things putting ember on it you got siren horn to basically help you get stuff off you can exalt all of your sources here because they all have the play you may exalt it and deal three damage to your creature so you can literally play these and get ember you can have Faust out and then start rocking your opportunist to increased key costs. Not to mention the fact that old Bruno is going to do it and then Shadow Saurus has a capture pip. Like all these things are leading to making Faust super powerful. It's left on the board. Uh, the double Ghost Hawk with a lot of creatures and a lot of creatures you want to reap with in other houses here too. Um, like look at this. We got two reap discard a card from your hand if you do draw card potentials, which is really nice. Citizen Shrix, Console Primus. Like, they're all cards that are really nice candidates for um, for basically having the Ghost Talks come into play. Not to mention, you just got this huge Niffle and the Beasts in here. There's one, two, well, this one doesn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Uh, I think that's all there. Eight, nine. There's nine beasts in this deck on top of it. So it's just, it's cool. This deck does a lot of things. You have a big board that can do wild things. Uh, Post Pixies is super annoying to deal with too. Um, and then aside from that, I mean, this deck, it just works. It's got good synergy. I think things work well together in it, which is really nice. Uh, I would actually throw an opportunist on Faust if it survives to give it an extra turn because I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, there's no taunt. But you can ward it, obviously, if you got an ancient power, which keeps it a little bit more alive. Um, what else is here that works for it? Yeah, I think that's about it. And then obviously rapid evolution. Uh, if you can keep it alive for an extra turn. So yeah, there's all these really, this deck just works really nice. So they're both, I think, really, really solid decks that are a ton of fun to play. And uh, which one would you rather have? I actually don't know. When I when I originally thought, I thought I would have one, and now I don't know. So I want to see what you all think about these two and which ones you would rather have. So let me know in the comments below, which would you rather have desperately active Ayapo or the thing that strays from the elements. You tell me, all right? Have a good one, folks. Oh, I forgot. May your ember never be stolen and your keys forged promptly. Have a good one.